There he is. Got, got him. Yep. There you got him. Yeah. Got him. Ooh. What are you thinking? I think he's feeling pretty good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got some redemption on him. He hit yeah. it a few times in. <laughs> oh, nice pike. Real big, big, big snake. Yeah. Hoo -hoo. Yeah, yeah we're going to gonna get him in the yeah, in the come bin. Here, come on, come here, buddy. Yeah, that's a big, that's a good one. Big gator. Whoa. There we go. Oh, whoa. whoa Ooh. Come on. My hero. Let's when you go. Look at, look at that. No, how do you like that? I even get the bait out on the way in. That's what we like. What do you think about that? Thank you, sir. How that, long, we've, we've been northern pike fishing. You know, you come up on a trip like this, and I, we like to experiment. We love to fish for all different species of fish. So, you know, throughout the couple of days up here, we're fishing for walleyes. We'll fish for some pike, as well as uh, uh, some lake trout. But uh, that's a nice one. That's uh, one of the best ones we've caught so far. You know, Sturgeon Lake is a monstrous lake, and it's got tons of rocks, weeds, and structure. And one of the unique things Robert does here at Trapper's Point Camp is gives every guest a depth finder. It's got updated waypoints for lake trout, big pike like this, and tons of walleye. And it also has safe travel routes. So you can get on fish right away and get back home safe. Gee, super thick across the back. There you go. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves. Adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Basically at Trappers Point Camp, I'm out, here, I'm out here fishing every week with my guest. I offer a free guided trout trip uh, for any guests that are brand new, four people or more. The reason why I do that oh, is because lake trout one. fishing is oh. phenomenal on this lake. Um, it's very important uh, to get my guests on, on the lake trout. So while I'm doing that, I'm showing them walleye spots as I'm driving throughout the lake, taking them fishing. And I kind of know where the walleyes are moving seasonal. Um, in the spring, it's, it's kind of pretty easy to catch them. They're in my sanctuary on the map um, within the first three miles of my lake. Um, and you just kind of fish the, the points and you can catch you know, your 150 walleyes a day type thing. But once, once it gets seasonal and you're into the July and August months, it's really important to know where they're, where they're hanging out in the deeper basins. Um, they're feeding on deep perch, uh, ciscos. So every week that I'm out there fishing, I can uh, point the next week's groups in the right direction. And that's where my navigation that I do for my guests comes into play. And Tim here is a first time guest and he'll tell you about it. When I talked to Bob about uh, how we were gonna find places out on the lake to fish, he says, I can give you a navigational uh, instrument and uh, put it in your boat, try it out. He says, I've got a track through the whole lake down to the end down there. And uh, I used that and uh, it was great. He had the color coordinates there so I could follow it. And um, it kept me on the path so I didn't get off path and maybe get into some iffy places. And uh, it was really great. And uh, it, without that, it would be kind of tough. Uh, you know, you could go and find spots, but Got you sure em. as heck don't want to hit anything with your boat. So oh. it was great to have that. Oh. Gosh. You know, when you could come up on these Canadian trips like this, you know, and, and you have waters that actually uh, have lake trout in them. One really fun technique, I used to guide in Canada for when I was going to college, and we used to catch them on uh, blade baits. And it's a really great technique because you can actually fish with a regular spinning rod, just like your walleye fishing. You don't need any type of specialized gear. And you just sort of vertical yeah, jigging these time. deep, I mean, deep water basins. Hope we're trying. What? Trying. <laughs> Keep them pinned here. The mag. The mag. Mag wrap. The mag. Producing. Yep. It's for everything. Lakers, walleyes, gators. This bait catches it all. Yeah, nice little laker. But this is a, such a fun way to fish. I mean, it's really pretty fast. I'll leave him in the water. Thank you, sir. And give you the pliers. Yes, I even need some bub action. We'll leave him in, in, in the drink here temporarily. Get that for you. Here's the pliers. OK. You've got me sold on the, the rep of Magnum. Using the perch color. You're on perch? Perch, yep. Wow, holy mackerel. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line.
The interesting thing is at this time of the year, all these fish are piled up in these deep water holes. So the fish are so easy to find, you know, late summer. These lake trout are all pinned deep with the tulabies and ciscos that they feed on all summer. But it's a really fun, fun way, this vertical fishing like this, because you can use the same exact same gear you use for walleyes. You don't need any type of downriggers or, you know, three-way rigging or trolling or anything like that. He's letting that one go. There you go. Ready to rock. What do we got here? This is a little bit of a sportier one. You're telling me the, the Rapala Magnum has been, it's been catching everything, you know, for walleyes and pike. And we've been using the exact same equipment for lake trout fishing, which, which is sort of cool because you don't have to change gear you, wherever you see them at. Wow, this guy here is a, more of a substantial beast, I'd, I'd imagine. I just have it's like a St. Croix uh, mid-vertical j jigging rod. 10-pound test suffix, 10-pound fluorocarbon leader, braid. In, it's been sort of fun. We've been just, just, we dropped out. We were walleye fishing right up on this point over here. We drop into this deep water basin and we see hooks all over and we said, huh, maybe we should drop some baits out in here and see if we can catch some lake trout during midday here. This is a, this is a nice sized fish, whatever beast we have here. Oh yeah, it's nice. I see him. You see him? Yeah, there he is. Oh, he's That's dead. a big fish. Yep. Come here, buddy. Come on, buddy. Oh. Come here. Oh, there he goes. Oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hope oh, I got him. There we go. Okay. There we go. Beautiful fish. Look at that. Gorgeous. Boy, are they cool, aren't they? sort of an afternoon treat here. We'll get her back in the drink. A lot of lake trout fishing is actually uh, using your electronics to initially find them. As you can see, when I zoom out, we're in a deep water gut in between two points. There's some more right there. So we're gonna turn around and drop on those little rascals right there. There he is, got him, got him. Ooh, there you go. Ooh, that's why we like Lakers. <laughs> right <laughs> there. <laughs> that's how fast, that's, that's how fast it is. That's why we like lake trout. But there's a couple of different baits that actually we usually like to use for this. A jigging wrap, magnum wrap is an, another good bait. And the other one that's a really good one that I've used, caught tons of fish on is a blade bait like this here. And you usually fish at that a little bit differently. What I'll do is pound the bait on the bottom and reel it up, and you're it's really good for suspended fish. Okay, we got a another double header on. <laughs> I had to get his buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, bites. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rods on a planet. You know what? This is the Rapala Magnum. It's like a real. Uh, I'll get her, get her back in the drink here first. We'll show you the bait. Look at that runt. Come here. Wow. Come here. There we go. You know what? I'm gonna go without the net, I think. I'll just take the bubba. Okay. Just there unpin them and there, just unpin her. Catch another. This is actually a relatively new bait. This is the uh Rapala Magnum, which is sort of like a jigging wrap, but this is actually quite heavy. It's actually designed for deep water and current fishing. Uh, but it's what you'll have is it uh, it's got a little bit of a different design than the uh the jigging wrap, you know, it's a real beautiful, uh, it's got a, like a plastic body with lead in the interior and then it's got these wings, but this weighs one or one and one eighth ounce. So this thing's a bomb, boy, it, it drops to the bottom really quickly. For this scenario, when we're fishing in, you know, 65, 70 foot of water, the bait that drops quickly is really key. But it also has one other real cool feature, particularly for lake trout. What it does is it actually has like a ball bearing swivel in the center hook. So when the fish twist, 
they can just twist right on, on it and you, the fish don't have the tendency to get off with that single or with that hook with that barrel swivel position like that. But it's a cool bait, I know that much. Those are all Lakers. And that is me fighting one as we speak. Oh, you got one on? Oh yeah. It's sort of interesting, you know, a lot of people like, you know, coming up here in spring when a lot of the fish are concentrated shallow, realistically throughout the midsummer, I actually, to late to midsummer, I like it better because a lot more fish are concentrated in deep water, both the lake trout, the northern pike, the walleyes, you got fish, you can find uh, bigger concentrations of fish in deeper water. Concentration, that is the key, man. There is 100, I bet, at least 100. And, and I can see down on the bottom, it's, I can just on my 2D sonar in 80 foot of water, the cone angle is probably about 12 or 14 feet around. I can actually see probably, you know, 30, 40 fish. I mean, we drop it to the bottom, you lift that uh, mag wrap up, the jigging, mag up and the fish is on. Oh man, I'm not kidding you. There's a bunch of them down there, Jake. It seems better to drive around them and you find them and then you fish the fish that you see, physically see versus oh, yeah. just coming up and you start fishing all these spots. It takes us a year and a day to fish around them, you know, that they're, they're so big. You know, one thing that's really important when you come up, particularly as you get into deeper water situations, when you get out on the tip, we're on the tip of a big, great big point here. Let me get up to my screen here. This is a big underwater structure, but as they go into deeper water, what has the tendency to do, these fish have the tendency to collect together. When I drive around out here, a lot of this out here, believe it or not, is sand. And you can see what I've done. I actually drove around this perimeter of the tip of the point and identified these waypoints, identify the edge of the rocks. Because a lot of times you drive over these spots and is well, they look like a good spot, but realistically, <laughs> each one of these spots is laid out differently. This is the linchpin because every spot you pull up, the rocks are laid out differently on that individual spot. And what these coordinates do is enable you to fish the absolute, like these things here, this inside corner, we got the wind blowing in right here. The inside corner right in here should be a really good spot right now. There we go. Got another one? Yeah, a little bit better. I think he's just slightly bigger than the neater. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these die with drag. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. Incredible, 11 year warranty. We'll see though. Yeah, another walleye. What's that? Yeah, nice one on the plastic. On the spinner rig? Yes, sir. I like that. Yeah, I like that too. Come here, buddy. Especially when I don't have to use live bait. Just a gorgeous Canadian walleye. I got that floating spinner rig right now and a gold orange. Seems to be working. Right here. That spinner rig is such so it's such a nice tool to really cover water when you're on lakes that you've never fished before. You can actually comb a lot of water pretty quickly to isolate where at least schools of fish are. We're up here in uh, it's actually uh, uh, mid August, and a lot of these fish are really concentrated out, out into uh, what you term as uh, deep water basin areas, actually. Uh, you know, there's a wide range of different uh, techniques to catch Canadian walleyes. Uh, actually, when you look on the deck of the boat here, 
I've got a hair jig, I got a jigging wrap magnum, I got a swim bait. We actually have a, over on this side, we got a spinner rig. But this is one of my favorites and it's sort of a different jigging technique. And it's really termed as, we call it moping. But what it entails is using a soft plastic. This happens to be a, a big bite uh, slim shad. It happens to be stoplight color and then a really heavy half ounce uh, moon eye jig. And what the way you present this bait in these really rocky conditions is sort of interesting. I'm using real heavy profile bait. It's midsummer. I'm going to literally drop the bait to the bottom like this and then simply raise it off the bottom. I'm not jigging it on the bottom. What I want to do is suspend that bait anywhere between three to five feet off the rocks, which is nice in the fact that you're not getting hung up a lot in a lot of these Canadian lakes. You know, it's a, rocks are a, a severe problem. But what the thing is, is throughout the summer months, many of these walleyes are feeding on suspended bait fish, specifically ciscos and these uh, um, pelagic bait fish and they're feeding up in the water column. And it's a really cool technique because what you do is actually take it and you don't do a lot of jigging with it. What I'm gonna do is actually just move along really slowly with the trolling motor and hover the bait anywhere from three to five foot off the bo bottom. And it's sort of interesting. A lot of times you'll see the fish will be, I'm watching in forward facing sonar and my 2D so sonar as I'm moving along the edge of the reef. But it's a really, uh, a really interesting technique when it comes to walleye fishing, but you also catch big pike on this thing, smallmouth bass hit like it too. It's a really uh, relatively simplistic technique, and a lot of people don't understand it in the fact that most of the time you think a jig, you throw it out, you let it sink down to the bottom, and you bounce it on the bottom, but we're not doing that. You're just hovering the bait off the bottom over the fish. And in the right situations, it's amazingly effective. You can see these are big boulders but these are the walleyes I'm trying to catch right here. Boy, this is, we're hitting it. Really should be right on. That's the fish who you'll catch, that guy right there. It seems like the fish's attitude has changed pretty dramatically because he said, uh, Robert said that one of the key baits he had been catching tons of fish on lately are spinner rigs, which it makes it sort of nice. You get out on, you know, like this Lake Sturgeon. Lake is monstrous, that lake. I mean, it's 56 miles long and there's just gigantic bars, underwater structures, underwater shelves, food sunken humps. And he says spinner rigs is a real key technique because you can cover a lot of water real quickly to find them, you know, which is sort of nice. And the same thing with some of those pop jigging techniques or even the jigging wraps, you know, popping jigging wraps is pretty quick when you can come over these bars when the fish are actively feeding. You can catch quite a few of them and just bounce from point to point to point to point, sunken hump. Makes it a little bit easier when the fish are on, but when they're inactive, you gotta slow down. Oh, wow, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are tough. It's a, that's a better one. There, look at that guy there, now you're talking. There we go. Look at that beast, now, that, now you're talking. I tell you one thing, this has been one fun trip. I mean, we actually, the weather, beautiful weather, and just fabulous fishing here up on Sturgeon Lake, no question about it. We've been just catching oodles and oodles of great big walleyes eaters. I mean, the lake trout deal was just amazing, but it's been one fun trip, no question about it. I mean, it's an amazing, amazing deal. <laughs> Look at that guy there. Come on, buddy. Back to the depths. You know, when I first got turned on to the things of God and started looking at uh, different religious beliefs, different kind of structures, church structures and everything, I was confused. Yeah, you know, I, I said, man, how can there be so many different churches? Well, the more I got into the Word and I got to speak at many different, uh, different churches, uh, over the years, and uh, doctrines of men get embedded in there, and it's traditions. There's traditions that get into that particular church that really don't have no seed in the actual Word of God. A lot of it, it becomes traditional. And uh, uh, you got to get comfortable in the church you're in. You know, it's interesting, uh, uh, of the people that I go uh, to work with, uh, my family, a couple of my closest friends, we all go to different churches. Some of us don't even go to church. 
in there, but they love the Lord with all their heart. No question about it. They pray on a daily basis. They seek God in, in there. And you look at all these those things and you understand what is really important. And I know traditionally, when you get into the Word of God, too much rigid tradition sometimes stops the Spirit of God to have the freedom to move the way He likes to move. And, and uh, that's an interesting thought. You don't want to stifle the Spirit of God. You've got to leave room for Him to move to who's ever in the full-time ministry in that pulpit. When the Spirit of God touches that person, he or she is there to talk to that body of believers and deliver a message from the Lord to that group of believers. So you find a church that you're comfortable in. And uh, uh, like I said, for me, my I have family members, closest friends, but there's one foundational thing that doesn't change. And to me, it's the flat out the most important. Forget all of the doctrines, all of the other stuff. If, if you like it, I, I like this music. I don't, this is too, all of these things. The bottom line is Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Did you ask him to forgive your sins? Ask him to come into your heart. Turn your life over to him. Serve him with your heart. Jesus, forgive me. And, and you make a simple confession of faith directly to him and your heart changes. That's when the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the Bible called the Holy Ghost, becomes alive in your body and you act and see different things. But you get comfortable. That is the foundation. Is Jesus the Son of God? Did he come for the reason he said, said that he came to die for the sins of mankind? You get all of this straightened out and the rest of it, you'll be led. You'll be led. Don't, don't, keep an open mind. And if you're in a church that you are not hearing from God, you're not, you're, you're going in, it's, you're not here, you're not getting moved at all. Or, or you might want to give a thought, thought to look a little bit around. And, and I know in my case and many people, I love going to church on Sunday. It lifts my spirit for the week. It's a big part of my life. But then again, I know many people, they call them nuns today, that love the Lord. They're, so, they're praying on a regular basis and they do love the Lord and they flat out are going to heaven because they shed the blood of Jesus. Simple but true. Hey, from all of us here at the edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. See you in the water.